Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be going over 12 more compact conifers for small spaces. If you happen to miss the first video, this is actually a continuation on from a video I made closer to a year ago at this point. I'll link it down below if you want to take a look, uh, but I got a pretty good response. It seems like a lot of people are interested in that, so I figured, why don't I share 12 more plants? So, with all that being said, why don't we just get down on the list? There's three quick things I just want to note before getting started. The first thing is that when I talk about the size of these plants, they all have a specific dimension that I'll mention on them, but they do happen to get larger than it says. I'm just following the numbers that I've been given online. Um, generally, this is about a garden size, meaning that the plants will grow to be that size in closer to about 10 years or so, uh, but it doesn't mean that they will stay that size if they're not pruned. So just disclaimer, you'll end up seeing that actually with a couple of these examples. Second, I actually streamlined this and made all these plants from Isley Nursery just because I think they're a great company. They've got really good information on their website. So I will actually have a link to each one of these plants uh, in the description down below so you can take a look and do some more research if you'd like. And how I'm going to set this up is obviously all these conifers are going to be compact. However, I'm still separating them into three different sizes, just like the last video, where we'll have the tallest varieties first. So I've got four that are greater than 10 feet tall. Then I've got a medium group, which is about three to five feet tall. And then a small group, which is going to be less than three feet. Okay, starting off strong with the Westerstead Swiss Stone Pine. So this is Pinus Sembra. Uh, it gets about 12 feet tall by eight feet wide, once again, just the dimensions they give me, it will get larger over time, but generally a more compact plant. It's hardy all the way down to zone three, grows about six to 10 inches per year, and is gonna do best in full sun. Now, some of the really interesting features with this plant include that it has a broad upright growth that gives it a nice Christmas tree shape. So if you're looking for a great Christmas tree looking plant for your yard, this could be a really great alternative to some of the others they get really big. I happen to really like the bluish green needles that this plant has. There's a couple others on this list that you'll see as well, but I'm a huge fan of anything blue. And the last thing is gonna be about the candles that this pine grows. Um, you'll see any pine will have these like long spurts of new growth that are just happen to be called candles. These have nice bright yellow candles that'll emerge in the spring with new growth. And although this tree doesn't flower, it does look very nice in the spring when everything else is flowering. Okay, moving on to number two is an interesting name. This is Granny's Ringlets Japanese Cedar. This is a Cryptomeria japonica. It grows about 10 feet tall by eight feet wide. It's only hardy to zone six, so if you're in a colder climate, this may not be the best option for you. Warmer climate should be okay. And it grows about six to eight inches a year, so pretty moderate growth, and it's gonna want full sun to partial shade. This one can tolerate a little bit more shade, um, but I'll specifically mention if it's only full sun. Some of the features include lime green needles that may bronze out in the winter. I put a specific note because I haven't grown this one myself, but I do know that most cryptomeria do tend to bronze out quite a bit. They almost look dead in the winter is how bronze they get. I'm not sure if this one does the same. Um, maybe some further research could give a good answer to that question, but if you happen to plant this and it bronzes out a lot in the winter, as long as it's got a flex in the branches, it's still alive. One thing that's important to note that I do have as a feature is that this will start off as more of a globe shape. So if you're looking for this plant, either ordering it online or finding it at a garden center, you're most likely not gonna see it as more of that Christmas tree conical shape. You're gonna see it more often as like a rounded ball. And a lot of compact plants tend to start off small and more rounded and eventually develop a leader over time. I think there's one or two others on this list that do the same. So just so you that just so that way you know, you might not see it looking the same way that it looks in the pictures here in person. The last thing I said is that it has a unique texture that makes you almost want to pet the plant. Um, I don't know, it's like, it's like a little spiky close up, but then really soft, and it's just one of those plants that you really want to touch. Okay, number three is a Von Martin Giant Sequoia. This is Sequoia Dendron Giganteum. It gets about 10 feet tall by eight feet wide. Once again, hardy to zone six, so not as cold hardy. Uh, grows about six to eight inches a year, and this one is gonna want full sun. Give it as much sun as you can. The interesting features about this tree is that it's a great alternative to a giant sequoia, uh, growing only about a quarter of the rate. So if you really like a giant sequoia but happen to live in a regular suburban lot or whatever the case might be, um, or just don't want a tree that big on your property, this could be a great alternative for something that's gonna stay smaller, more dense, and is gonna give you that sequoia look uh, without it being 100 or 200 feet tall. I've noticed too that it has a little bit of a dense habit and wider when it's small, but it'll start to gain height over time. 
And the other interesting thing about this tree is that the bright green foliage is actually scented if you brush against it. Some evergreens have a lot of uh, scent to them, like think about like a balsam or Fraser fir when you're picking out Christmas trees, other stuff not so much. So this is one of those fragrant ones. And our last tree for our tall section is actually one of my personal favorites. This is a Hortzman Silver Korean Fir, known as Abies Koreana, also known as Hortzman Silverlock. You'll probably see that more often on the tag versus the Silver Korean Fir, uh, but nonetheless, it's the same plant. This gets about 12 feet tall by 8 feet wide, hardy down to zone 4, grows about 6 to 10 inches a year, and this one you're going to want to give it as much sun as you can. However, at the university I attend, they do have it planted in more partial shade, and it seems to do okay, so you could take your chances with it. The really cool thing about this tree is that it is unlike other Korean firs in the sense that it has gorgeous curled needles that expose the white stomatal banding. Now, I'm going to use this term a couple of times throughout this video. Stomatal banding is something you'll see on evergreens, most specifically firs, um, where if you look on the underside of the needles, if you flip a branch upside down, on each one of those needles you'll see like this little white band, um, and that's just called stomatal banding. Some of them it's not very noticeable in, but others like this, because the needles curl inward, I mean when you look at this plant up close, it actually is like a cylinder the way that it's shaped. Um, and it just exposes all that white color, whereas naturally you wouldn't see it as much on a regular Korean fir because most of the time it's just facing down. I would say that uh, hemlocks show stomatal banding pretty well uh, as well, um, but it's just a really beautiful thing. Besides that, it also has a smaller habit compared to a standard uh, Korean fir, so if you like the look of firs or just Christmas trees, this is something that's going to fit into a lot more spaces than a regular tree. And one more thing I wanted to add is I've noticed that, especially living in Rhode Island and being in Colorado right now, um, being in a drier climate allows a lot of bluer looking plants to do a lot better, um, specifically like Colorado blue spruces. A lot of people want to plant them on the East Coast, but they just don't love the humidity in the summer. This is a great way that you can get more of a bluish color if you happen to live in a humid environment. I've seen this specific plant grown in Rhode Island where we have very humid summers and it seems to do pretty well. It doesn't drop a lot of its needles after like a year or two. It seems to hold up a pretty dense looking shape. So great blue choice. Okay, next we're moving on to the medium category, which is plants that are generally about five to 10 feet tall. The first up on this list is Whistles Saguaro Lawson False Cypress. Interesting name, but this is a Camisiparis Lawsoniana. Gets about eight feet tall by two feet wide, hardy down to zone five, and grows anywhere from about one to six inches per year. And this is gonna want as much sun as you can give it, so full sun. Uh, features with this plant are going to include a very upright habit. You'll notice in the pictures and videos that it definitely grows more up than it does out compared to those other trees we were looking at. Um, and it generally has a more open habit uh, as it grows. It'll be more condensed when it's smaller, just naturally how it grows. But I've seen some more mature pictures of these plants and they definitely look a little more open. So it's not something everybody loves. It's not my personal favorite, um, but I do think it's a really cool plant, especially when it is in its infancy. And the last thing is the structure. The reason they call it um, a whistle's saguaro is because people actually say that the structure can be comparable to a saguaro cactus. So if you don't happen to live in the desert and want something to look similar, this could be an interesting alternative, I guess. Second on our medium list is going to be Spiralis Hinoki Cypress. This is a Camisiparis obtusa. This one only generally gets about four feet tall by three feet wide. You'll see in the video that I have that it's definitely not four feet tall, probably closer to eight or nine. But again, this plant is, is, was planted a very long time ago, so it'll take a while to get up to that size, um, but it will still succeed that four feet tall. This one's hardy to zone five, grows about two to four inches a year, and you can do this one with either full sun or partial shade. The features I really like about this tree, I specifically chose this one because I've noticed that a lot of people like to plant Hollywood junipers uh, because of their interesting habit, and I think that this is a really great compact version of that Hollywood juniper. Now, this is a Camisiparis, this is not juniperus, so different genus. Um, however, it does have that kind of wispy, wild, uh, architectural look to it that you'll see normally from that juniper, but it won't get nearly as big. So really great alternative, could do great in containers, um, and I think it's a really great specimen plant too, just something that's going to stand alone and look great for all 12 months. 
Next up is my personal favorite name. This one is called the Propeller Japanese Umbrella Pine, um, and the Latin's pretty fun to say as well, Ciodopitus verticillata. This one gets about six feet tall by eight feet wide, so it's actually a little bit wider than it is tall. Again, it'll still get bigger over time, but pretty much that's the garden size you'll see in about 10 years. It's hardy to zone five, grows about two to four inches a year, and it's gonna want full sun to partial shade, so it can tolerate just a little bit of shade. Now the features that are really unique about Japanese umbrella pines is that they're a unique evergreen compared to the rest. They've got thick, strappy needles, um, just a completely different look. These plants have barely changed like in, through evolution. Um, they've stayed pretty much the same for a very long time. Uh, so if you're looking for a unique evergreen, any type of Japanese umbrella pine is great, but this one is even better because I have just the standard Ciodopitus verticillana in my garden, and that one um, does get pretty big, but it bronzes out a lot in the winter. It gets to be kind of like a mucky brown, bronze or brown color um, in the wintertime. This one tends to stay a much more solid green and a little bit brighter in the winter, which if I would go back and replant that, I would definitely go for something that would stay more green in the winter. It's nice to look at, but this is an even better option. The other thing I want to mention is Isley specifically said that this does best in acidic soil. So if you have a little bit of alkaline soil, then you might struggle a little bit with this one, um, but you could just add some type of soil acidifier and that should hopefully help your situation. Okay, the last for the medium category is my personal favorite on this list and something I'm hoping to get at some point. This is a Monty Blue Spruce. Uh, it's Picea pungens. Gets about eight feet tall by six feet wide. Hardy all the way down to zone two and grows about six or more inches a year. So it's, it's kind of a fast grower, but not for sure. It uh, definitely wants full sun. And the interesting features about this plant is that it's actually a cross between the popular variety or cultivar of Colorado blue spruce called Hoopsai and then the Montgomery. Now the Montgomery generally stays more of that kind of globe shape and will eventually have a leader over time. Whereas the Hoopsai is more of just like that traditional Christmas tree looking shape, but gets pretty big. This combines the two by having the compact form of the Montgomery, as well as the nice, perfect, you know, conical shape of the hoops eye and turns it into something really awesome and especially if you can get a nice looking plant from the growers who start off grafting these plants um, then you can have a really great looking compact Christmas tree. The other thing that's great about this plant is it has very bright blue needles. When you're looking at Colorado blue spruces, they've got a pretty wide range from being kind of dark to very bright. This is definitely on that brighter sense so this will really stand out as a specimen in the garden. And now we are moving on to our short category, which is any plant that's less than five feet tall. So we're talking really compact in terms of conifers. First up is the Sky High WB Norway Spruce. I don't know what the WB stands for. That's just what I saw online. But this is a Picea abies. Gets only about two feet tall by two feet wide. So really could fit in anywhere. Hardy to zone three, grows about three inches per year. And this one is going to want full sun. The great features about this plant is that it has very dense growth. It reminds me a little bit of like a Dwarf Alberta spruce, um, but a little bit of a different look because it's a Norway spruce. You'll notice before it sends out new growth for the season that brown buds will decorate the medium green clusters of needles, which gives a nice contrasting look where you get two different colors. The last thing is that this actually was discovered as a witch's broom in Germany. If you're unfamiliar with a witch's broom, it's basically like a, a viral type of situation in a plant where it causes a bunch of branches to grow really compact and close together. And if you look at like a deciduous tree in the wintertime, it does kind of look like a witch's broom coming from this one branch. Uh, so that's just the name that they give it, but they were able to propagate that and now the entire plant is that nice compact look. The next plant is Hebe Canadian Hemlock. This is Suga canadensis, which gets about three feet tall by two feet wide, hardy down to zone four, grows only about two to four inches a year, and wants full sun to partial shade. I would say that Canadian Hemlocks are known for tolerating a little bit more shade, so you should be able to get away with that. Um, but the one thing I will mention is that, at least in the Northeast, I know that woolly adelgid is a pretty big issue, and most people have gotten rid of their Canadian Hemlocks because of that. I am unsure if this variety is in any bit resistant to it. Um, there's treatments for it if you're able to do that, but just a disclaimer, if you happen to live in a climate where woolly adelgid is present. But for the features, it does have nice white stomato banding like we were talking about earlier um, that's underneath and it definitely shows up strong on this variety. So you'll see kind of that two-toned look. 
It has very short, tightly rounded needles. When you get in close and look at this, it's pretty interesting actually. Um, and then it has a more open habit with time. You'll definitely notice that um, like any of these plants, they tend to be more compact and full and spread out a little bit as they get older. Um, but still, it's a nice compact plant. It's gonna look great in the winter time with some snow on it. Next up is the Compressa Common Juniper. This is Juniperus communis. It gets about three feet tall by one foot wide. It's definitely gonna get taller than three feet, um, but you can easily just trim off the top, or I would say just put it in a spot where it's a narrow space, but you've got as much height as you'll let it grow. This plant is hardy down to zone four, grows about two to four inches per year, and is gonna want full sun. The great features about this plant is that it's a great vertical accent that can go in a rock garden, it can go in containers, it can be a nice flank to a doorway. I don't know, there's a lot of different options you could use this plant for. Definitely is a very interesting look. A great alternative to maybe a sky pencil holly if you know you see those around all the time and you want something really you know upright and narrow um, but don't want the same thing that a lot of other people have. So great plant. Um, and I just added one more thing saying that it'll work great in large containers. I think that could be a really fun focal point. We're on the last plant of this list and it's not actually a conifer, but I did this in the last video. So I figured that it'd be fun just to throw in one more thing that actually is a broadleaf evergreen. This is a dwarf pagoda Japanese holly, which is Ilex carnata. Gets about three feet tall by two feet wide, hardy down to zone five, grows about two to four inches a year and wants full sun to partial shade. What's really interesting about this plant is that it's an extremely compact version that has a really unique texture compared to other Japanese hollies. What I really like about this plant is it, I'm just like mesmerized by like the layers of the leaves that you'll see and oh, my phone's falling out. Uh, the layers in the leaves that make this interesting texture that makes you just want to go up and look at it. Um, and then also the blackberries have a really awesome look to it. Now the berries form like underneath the New Year's growth. So it's not always the easiest thing to see, but once you get closer to it, you can kind of poke in and take a look and you'll see those blackberries. And that's not something you'll usually get with a conifer. So I figured it was something fun to throw in. And that's it, we made it to the end of the list. So I hope you guys liked this video. Um, like this video if you happen to enjoy it and would like to see another one. I don't know if I wanna keep going with this, um, but I am having fun with it for sure. So it definitely could be something to continue on. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know and I'll try to answer them as best as I can for what my knowledge is on these plants. I haven't necessarily grown them all, um, but just, I've grown other variations of a lot of these, so at least I have some way that I can kind of answer this for you. Uh, but like I said, all these plants I'm gonna have linked down below, and um, thank you, Isley, for letting me use all your videos on Instagram, um, because I think that gives a really great look as to what all these plants are gonna look like, especially as they start to mature. With all that being said, I hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.